Let's talk about the non-separable case. So this is the case where you can't perfectly separate the positives and the negatives. Like if I show you the, the margins again, um, then you'll notice that some points are misclassified and we have to figure out what to do about it. Now SVM assesses a penalty based on um, how far the margin is from one. So if you are on the, on the wrong side of the decision boundary, you suffer a penalty that's, that you know, would be um, proportional to how far you were from having a margin of one. So not just being classified correctly, but you have to have a margin of one. All right, so this is the primal formulation for the non-separable SVM. And there are two terms in the objective. The first one is the, the same as the margin term. So it says, please keep margins large. And the second term is a penalty term for if you violate that. Now that interesting symbol there, that's actually a Greek letter C, and it's also called a slack variable because it says, okay, if you violate the margin conditions, I'm gonna pick up the slack. And then it penalizes you for how much slack you pick up, right? How much those conditions are violated. All right, so there are, um, so yeah, so let me give you a little bit more perspective on this. Um, so if the margin is actually bigger than one, it doesn't have to pick up any slack. There's no slack to pick up. So C can happily be zero and everybody's happy. The objective doesn't suffer, the constraint's satisfied, we're good. If the margins are less than one, that's where it assesses this penalty that's linear in how far you are away from having a margin of one. Now there are two terms here. There's um, the, like I said, there's a, like a keep the margin large term and a, a slack term. And these trade off with each other depending on the user defined value of C. Okay, so I wanna show you a little bit about what that trade off is about. So let's say you're considering putting the decision boundary here. You have one misclassified point, but you have also a bunch of points that have margin less than one. Like not just that, so that misclassified point that has a margin less than zero, but there's a whole bunch of points that are really close to the decision boundary there. And so the you're gonna have to pick up a lot of slack, right? So that's probably not so good. Um, on the other hand, let's say you considered putting a decision boundary here. So in that case, you have two misclassified points, but the only slack you pick up is from those two points because everything else has a large margin, right? When you move that decision boundary, you increase the margin on a huge number of those negative points. And so, yeah, there's some slack to pick up from those two misclassified points, but also um, you, you helped make more of the margins large. And so that's the kind of trade-off that um, that your that SVM is choosing between in the non-separable case. And as you adjust that value of C, it trades off kind of where how you want to make that trade-off between the slack and the margins, right? Okay, so I'm going to rewrite this a slightly different way to kind of give you a perspective on it that might be familiar to you. So here. I'm gonna rewrite this just like that. So that notation means take the maximum of whatever's in the inside and zero. So Xi is what? If the margin is bigger than one, Xi is zero. There's no penalty. If, if Y times F is less than one, that's where Xi is one minus Y times F, right? Whatever that value is, okay, because it's, it's, uh, it's, it's positive, so we, we keep it. That's the penalty, that's the slack. All right, so if I write it this way, I can actually get rid of all the constraints and just put that into the objective because the constraints are all taken care of in this definition of C over here. And what I end up with, what I end up with is something that you might find familiar because this is a regularized risk functional. Right? This has two terms in it. The first term is actually the regularization term. And the second term is actually a sum of losses over the data points. And then that loss function is actually the hinge loss. It's actually 
exactly the SVM hinge loss that I talked about very, very early on that gives you this linear penalty depending on how far you are from a margin of one. Okay, cool. So now that we've kind of brought ourselves back into the perspective of where we are and you understand kind of where you are in the universe, let's go solve this problem. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna form the Lagrangian, which looks like this. And now there are two sets of uh, inequality constraints. There are the ones that you'd expect and then there are the new ones with the CIs being greater than or equal to zero. Those are inequality constraints. So I, I couldn't use the alphas again because I used them in the other set of constraints. And I can't use betas because those are for affine constraints. So I used R. Okay. All right, so we have all these new dual variables called R and both the alphas and the Rs have to be non-negative because again, they are dual variables on inequality constraints, which always have to be non-negative. And then after doing almost exactly the same types of computations we did in the separable case. So where you, you know, write down the KKT conditions, Lagrangian stationarity, complementary slackness, all those really great uh, tools, you end up with this dual. And if you had looked very carefully at the separable case dual, you'd notice that this looks familiar because it's almost exactly the same. The only difference is that upper bound of C on the alphas so that's pretty, that's, that's pretty cool, right? You get almost the same dual. So you're probably thinking, okay, if I set C off to infinity, I'd get back to the separable case. And that's true, you would. And if your data were separable, that's great. <laughs> of course, if your data are not separable and you set C off to infinity, then you can worry, then you end up with this problem that like, okay, some of my alphas are infinite and what do I do and so on. But, Luckily, you don't have to worry about this case because that's why we solved the non-separable case SVM. All right, cool. So you got it. Um, the only thing I need to tell you is you're probably wondering where the R's went. Well, as it turns out, one of the KKT conditions gives you that the RIs are just CI minus alpha I. So if you get the alphas, you automatically can get the R's the same way that you automatically can get the lambdas. Um, so you actually, this, this is actually the main dual uh, quadratic program that you need to solve in order to get everything. Okay, so now you know how to solve the non-separable case SVM.